Hey Floss Tube, what's up? It's Lori. I'm Sharky Stitcher. That's my new name. I'm getting used to it, so I like it. But um, if you accidentally tripped onto this video and don't know what you're doing here, uh, we talk about cross stitch here. So stay tuned and see what the fun's all about. Uh, I got a mixed bag today. Uh, I've got some orders that have come in. I got a long awaited fabric order that has finally arrived. So that equals new starts. So that's fun. Um, I've got a few rotations that have ended on certain projects, Serengeti mostly, got a new project started. But for the most part today, today was a weird thing for me because um, my birthday's tomorrow. Yay, happy birthday to me, March 13th. Tonight's the 12th, March 12th, Friday. And so my birthday's tomorrow. Yeah, shocker. Sharky Stitcher's a Pisces. I know you're all stunned. <laughs> but um, so yeah, since my birthday is tomorrow, one thing that I do for my birthday that I treat myself is I don't work. <laughs> so I'm a massage therapist and it's like, I don't want to spend my time touching other people on my birthday. So, um, and I really treated myself today. I kind of gave myself a half day today. I'm off tomorrow. I'm off Sunday and then Monday's my usual day off. So I have a lot of no touchy people time <laughs> on my hands and no doing laundry. That's pretty much what my real job is. And so I have been like a kid with a toy box and upended things in my craft room. So things are a mess right now, especially because I've got all these new orders that came in. Uh, a lot of it involves fabric. So I've been sorting through my fabric. I did contemplate doing a fabric parade or a fabric tour or whatever you want to call it for this video. But I think we'll save that for later because I've got enough to show you as it is with this video. So. From last time I spoke with you, I believe I was telling you about a one, two, three stitch order that I had made. Shockingly, that thing shipped fast. <laughs> um, actually, I don't, did I even tell you about that? I know I had gotten an order and that one took a while. Like sometimes one, two, three stitch does this annoying thing where it's like, oh, projected ship date the 11th. And then you check again. Oh no, now it's 12th. Oh no, now the 13th. They keep pushing it back. Well, this time, like I ordered it and they shipped it. I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. So I want to go over what's in that order. A lot of it's more kidding things up, which if you watched my last video, you'll kind of know what I'm kidding up, but we'll go over it together. Um, I'll show you guys my Pictureless Plus order. Some news. I have a sewing machine now. So yeah, that's exciting and slightly terrifying <laughs> because the one I've got is way above my pay grade. It was one of my mom's and she don't mess around when it comes to sewing machines. So this thing does things that like I am not qualified to do. So, and then I'll show you my Serengeti progress, which let's do that first because I am so excited with where I got. I kind of met my goal. There's a few little, little things in there, but let's not stress on it too much. But just for fun, look how I have to store this thing because it's so large. So, this one I keep on the bars because the fabric is pretty much as wide as the bars. And I've got like an old wrapping paper bin that I keep my whips in for the most part because I'm like paranoid about mice and dust and all these, you know, terrible things happening to my whips, getting them all dirty and stuff. But this is too big to fit in that. So I basically keep it on the bars and wrap it with a king size pillowcase. So that's what we do. But yeah, and I finished part one for the most part. There's still a few little things I need to do, but I, I was, I felt done enough and I threw the beads on too. I just couldn't resist and they're gorgeous. And I did one elephant panel. So here she be. Let's get nice and close. Look at that vitral flower in the middle. Isn't it gorgeous? I love it. And I love the little elephants at the top. Here's these. Famed little squares, those are a pain in the butt because bajillion quarter stitches out of nowhere. But yeah, I love this. It's so heavy beaded and it's so sparkly, oh my God. Now I am dreading kind of rolling up and down. I Like I wasn't gonna put the treasures and stuff in, but I just, I couldn't resist. I was like, I just, I, I need, I need the sparkles in my life. <laughs> so couldn't resist. So that's where I stopped on Serengeti and I wanted to do the elephant panel because I feel like that's the first clue that, hey, this is an African type design, you know? So, and I like when I finish my, or finish, <laughs> finish the part I'm working on on my Shadowlands, the first part, I like to finish the center and I like there to be something on it that identifies that this is what this design is about. Like on um, the deep blue sea design, 
I finished the center and the starfish. Like I had to do something ocean related, even though the center was ocean related too. It's like a microscopic algae or microplankton or something like that. But most of you wouldn't know that by looking at it really. Okay, so there's that. Now let's go over the Picture List Plus order. So I ordered four things. My main fabric was my Da Vinci. We'll get to that last because I couldn't resist and I threw it on a bars. So let's go over the other colors. Now this, um, these first two weren't too surprising. I actually had really tiny, small pieces of them. I just decided I wanted bigger ones too. So this one's Pansy. And these are all opalescent. So it's just a kind of a nice bluey purple. That's kind of nice, you yeah. know. Don't have anything planned for it, but just wanted, wanted it. This one is called Jazz. This is blue with splooshes of purple. Now, I do kind of wish the purple blended a little better. It kind of looks a little streaky to me. Kind of like, you know, your first try at tie-dyeing going kind of wrong. Or like when you tie-dye something, and you're like, oh, that looks so good. And then you wash it and it comes out and you're like, oh. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about this one. But it is still pretty. And again, I don't have anything planned for this one. I just wanted it. That and I have a piece of this not opalescent that I bought from my LNS, um, which no longer exists. I actually no longer have really an LNS, so I'm gonna have to find a new one. Keepstakes is an hour away, so maybe that can be my new LNS. <laughs> okay, and then the third piece that I got, this one I was kind of flipping a coin on it. I had seen on Pinterest someone had stitched up uh, Queen Mermaid and they had cited this fabric as being what they were using and it was a really pretty like it was multi-colors it was mostly blue but little streaks of red here and there and it just looked really cool but looking at it it was carnival when i look at the screenshot of carnival i was like that looks mostly red to me i don't know how you got mostly blue with a little bit of red so i ordering this thought yours probably isn't going to look like that other one and it did not but I really love this. Look how cool that is. It's just so vibrant and I don't know, it's just pretty. And it's, I'm glad I got it because it's a color I normally wouldn't have went after. So even though it's not like the Pinterest Queen Mermaid, which I'm fine with because I've got Queen Mermaid on here on a fabric that I dearly love, so I'm not like upset. So I'm kind of glad that I ordered this because I really, really like it. And I'm trying to decide what to do do on this. I'm thinking maybe an autumn design or something because it's just it's not really coming. Well, I guess yeah. See, I can see that uh, that fiery glow with little splashes of blue. So, but yeah, I just really think it's cool and I'm glad I ended up getting it. Okay, so now we go to the main event for that order, which is my Da Vinci, <laughs> which I was talking about in my last video. I had ordered a few pieces of Da Vinci from 123 Stitch just because I love Da Vinci and I couldn't resist a couple small cuts. So let me refresh you on what Da Vinci looks like. So bluey purple with splooshes of orange. And I had mentioned this piece here is kind of a weird, is it this one? No, I got too many pieces, I guess. Yeah, this one right here. So this one's like almost all blues and very, very little orange. And I had wondered like, hmm, what if the piece that I get is nothing like these, which these all pretty much look pretty consistent. Like here's a non-opalescent. This was actually the first piece I got. Oh, I just love it. So yeah, I mean, these all look pretty consistent. Let me tell you, the piece I got looks a little off, but I wanna say, I'm okay with it and I'll explain why. And again, this is for Fairy Moon. So let me grab it real quick, it's on the bars. So it's way more purple <laughs> than these other ones. So I will hold them all up here and you will kind of see how much more purple this piece that I got. But I'm okay with it because on Fairy Moon, she has, I don't know if you can see it. She's got like, there's a bunch of beads and there's some stitching in here. And they are kind of this blue color. So they would have gotten lost on that. 
let me pull out the beads that I'm using. I'm substituting um, Delica's. But here's the color. So that color on this, yeah, the sparkle makes it show up. And that's why I was like, oh, whatever, it'll be fine. But it shows up a lot better on this purple because these stand out as another color. And I just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, finally. And I spent some time <laughs> flipping this all different directions. And there's this big sploosh of orange here. That was my main concern was there wasn't going to be any orange because I like little bits of orange. And me and my son, we both looked at it and turned it and turned it. And I marked my center. And then I got the chart and I got some counting pins and I marked my way to the moon because I wanted to see where the moon was going to land because I didn't want it to land in a weird spot. And it's going to be up here and the orange is kind of like right where the moon and the wand and kind of her head are. So like there's going to be a big splash of orange kind of right in here. And I thought, oh, that'll look cool. So, but yeah, I went through a lot of effort with this one because I agonize over where the splooshes land <laughs> so but i'm very happy with that um what's funny is i used my rotary cutter to cut the edge of this and i had been when i knew that the sh the order had shipped finally finally i knew i was going to have to cut this because it's way too big and i wanted it to be able to fit on the bars this is um i think it's 25 and a half to 26 inches across this is my 30 30 inch bar and the piece that I got I actually have an extra I've got a big old pile up over here I'll show you all these later but here's the the piece that I removed which this piece is cool too I fancy maybe putting a dragon on that or something I don't know something cool but yeah I just I like it I know it's it's a little more purple than I would have normally liked, but because of the blueness of the beads on Fairy Moon, I'm okay. Um, so yeah, there's that. So I know I was gonna have to cut it just to make it fit that, and you know, there's that much fabric left over. So I didn't want that to go to waste. You know, it's just gonna be wrapped around a frame at the end anyway. So I decided to trim it. But what was funny is that's when mom has been holding this uh, sewing machine for me for a while. And the only reason I really, wanted to have a sewing machine was to zigzag my raw edges well I have the sewing machine here I for totally forgot and just threw this on the bars <coughs> excuse me without even zigzagging so I'll probably be ripping that off and zigzagging it later I'm not doing it right now I know you can put like fray check and stuff on there but I don't really like putting substances on my fabric I just don't trust them. It makes me feel a little weird. Um, I'm not going to be stitching on this just now. <laughs> and, you know, a zigzag stitch, that's that's not too hard. And mom did kind of show me how it's a Viking. Uh, if you know sewing machines, Vikings are like Ferraris. Um, I can't remember what kind my mom has now. And I don't ask me what this kind is now because it's very fancy. <laughs> I'm used to just doing straight stitches and zigzagging. So most of my use with uh, sewing machines was um, when I was a belly dancer, I would make my harem pants and some circle skirts and pretty much zigzagging the edge of my cross stitch. That's about as much as I would do with a sewing machine. My mom's a big quilter and she does applique and she does monogramming. This sewing machine will do monogramming. And I got this big, huge styrofoam case with like this frame for doing the monogramming and stuff on it, which I would like to do at some point, but I'm just a little intimidated. That and I'm leery of dipping my toe into another hobby because I could see myself being all, I'm gonna start making project bags now. Wee, look at me go. And I'm like, uh, I got enough stuff to work on as it is. So yeah, but I'm very excited to finally have this fabric and be getting Fairy Moon started because I've been wanting to start her forever. So, Pick up my beads that I dropped on the floor. There we go. So, but like I said, I had a lot of free time on my hands today. And while I was ironing that fabric and I had upended all this other fabric, I'm like, why don't I just iron some more fabric? <laughs> so um, the next one I will show you, I actually got another piece of fabric put on the bars, but I'm proud of myself because this is for a design that I was kidding up. Um, 
It's Mirabilia's. Let me grab the chart real quick. Mirabilia's Gypsy Queen, but I like to call her Tribal Queen just because Gypsy is a racial slur. I don't care if you use that term. This is just me doing me. You do you. So, but I'm kidding her up and I was not sure what fabric I wanted for her and I was going back and forth. I peeked at the viewer a little bit and kind of was like, you know, I want something maybe a little darker. Um, and I'm not a big fan of neutrals. Like I, I was entertaining the idea because she's got a lot of bright colors on her. So I thought neutral might be the way to go for her. But when I started tossing on all my fabrics, a piece that I was not even, it wasn't even on my radar. You guys have seen this piece before. This is a piece of Monaco that is unnamed. And it's this dark tanzanite color, very purpley blue with bits of gray. And I don't know if I can make this work, but let me, let me hold up the flosses. And let me tell you, I know this isn't going to show up well on camera, but in real life, I was like, yes. <laughs> for this toss and so here's the purples and they're still vibrant enough that they show up against this but it makes like the greens pop it makes the reds pop the oranges pop like it just did all the things for the colors I know this isn't doing it much justice and I'm so sorry for that I'm gonna try and take better pictures and put them up on my Instagram which is Sharky Stitcher just like the channel name I am missing a few metallics just because <laughs> Krennic got got the vid <laughs> for a bit there so but yeah and I'm super happy because I don't have to wear fabric I already had it so I'm all proud of myself because I used something from stash which I rarely ever do and this one I wasn't even thinking on you know using for anything so yay I'm happy about that now the person that I get this from um I'll put this in the comments not the comments the description but let me see if I can show you a close up. So Oksana, I know that's not focusing, hang on. Let's try doing this. Oksana Lopatina, she posts on Facebook and she has an eBay page. And she doesn't post regularly and her fabrics aren't named and she just kind of posts a few batches and, and away you, she goes, you know? and. I tend to like her Monaco's for some reason. That's what this is. It's a 20, 28 count Monaco. And Monaco's not my favorite because of how thick it is, but I also love that like there's no, you can't see through it at all. Like for some, I like that for some reason, especially for when I'm showing you guys, because then I don't have light shining through it. But yeah, I mean, I like her stuff. You know, and I have a couple pieces of hers. And I actually was looking at a couple of hers that I have for this. But this is the one that I was just like, ooh, yes. And I love picking fabrics for designs and having that, yes, this is it. Because I want something that makes the colors just pop. So, who knows when first stitches on her will be going in. But hopefully soon. Probably mania-ish time. Okay, so get this out of the way. You guys can't even see this side of the room, and I'm so thankful for that because it is, you know, a bit of mischiever. Okay, so I'm just going to pull my ironing board over here for this one. <laughs> Let's see how much stuff I drop on the floor. So another design that I was kidding up. Very ideal. Idle, whatever you want to call it. And she's pretty big. I actually put a little post-it note for how big the fabric is that I need to order for her. And so I was kind of, you know, on a high, like looking at fabric and stuff like that. Maybe I can find something in my stash. Well, no, because she's so big that I'm going to need to order something else. Because usually when I order fabrics, like, ooh, I want to see what color that is. I usually order just like an 18 by 26 or something. So most of them are smaller size, which works for most Mirabilis, but not this one. This one's too big. And... Let me see if there's a way I can show this to you without dumping everything on the floor. Probably not, but let's try. So this is my floss toss for Fairy Ideal. And I'm loving this green color. I like that. I think it's cool. And the greens don't blend too much with it. And it makes the yellows just pop. The pinks look nice on it because there's a fair bit of pink in it. And there's the silks. And the beads. 
I'll be converting those, most of them at least. Some of them maybe not, like these are frosted glass beads, which they don't look very frosted to me. They just look like a transparent um, color line. They almost look like Delicas. They have that kind of cylindrical Miyuki kind of look to them. So yeah, I'm not sure. And I actually have some Delicas that are that color, so that'll be an easy fix. And this color, and, and that color. Like, yeah, I'll probably be converting them to Delicas just because I love them. <laughs> But let me show you the fabrics that I was considering. I'll get the floss out of the way here. So this one I was considering because I was kind of like, come on, girl, you can do a neutral. You can do it. And yeah, putting the, the colors on it, like, yeah, okay, that would work. But I'm like, boring. <laughs> I mean, it would work just because these colors are so pleasant, I guess you'd say. Um, and then I was looking at which I only looked at this for a second and then I was like, nope, too boring. And this one I liked, but there's a couple colors that are too close for this one. So I kind of liked this one, but uh, where are they at? I think I just, yeah, here they are. This whole family, it's too close. And I looked to where they are and it, there's a lot of like, there's some in the rabbit, there's some in like the scroll for the bed. So I'm like, mm, that's not safe. So then when I looked at the green, which I really in my mind was thinking a light green of some kind, I was thinking probably a more delicate shade of green than this, but you know, I made sure, see, I'm just like, how fun. And I think it complements the greens pretty well. Let me pick out all the greens because I like to do that just to make sure there's no problems at all with colors getting lost in the background. So there's all the greens. And yeah, this one's a little, little close, but not too bad. And I think that's in like the fairy's wing and there's not much of that right up against the fabric. So, but my main goal for picking fabric for this was I wanted the yellows to say, hey, how you doing? And yeah, I think that does it. So, whereas with this, I just, I so yeah, and this is Pictureless Plus Valor, which this was from my one, two, three stitch order from last time. Obviously this piece is not big enough. I need a piece that is, I think I need a half a yard. I need, if I'm doing 32 count, which I'm thinking about, because there's a lot of heavy stitching, 32 count would be 21 and a half by 25 and a half. So that's a lot of fabric, um, but now the question is opalescent or not opalescent and i usually i'm usually pretty like do opalescent do opalescent this one i don't know and maybe it's because gypsy queen like because yeah I, I was thinking of doing her on an opalescent and that monaco i have isn't opalescent but i kind of really became at peace with the idea of doing her on not opalescent because I call her tribal queen because her headgear kind of reminds me of when I was a belly dancer. And this, this is me going to be segueing a little bit, you know, into, you know, a bit of an off topic, but for two types of belly dancing, for the most part, cabaret and tribal cabaret is the kind of Vegas showgirl, super sparkly, super smiley, super happy, pretty cute. Everybody's, you know, bodies are perfect and everybody's smiley and happy. And, you know, it's more about like putting a show on, look at me, look at me. Then there's the tribal girls. The tribal girls aren't as glitzy, aren't as glam, and they're more sinuous and more snaky, you know, which was kind of more my aesthetic. They weren't smiling. It was more about like, you're lucky to watch me, <laughs> you know, instead of look at me. And so I kind of like the idea of the fabric not being sparkly kind of for that reason. Because, and then the beads will pick up more, you know, because I, I try to remind myself, you know, sometimes it's nice when the fabric's not sparkly because then the beads do the sparkling, you know. So that kind of made me at peace just because, you know, she's tribalish to me. So, you know, tribal girls, they don't wear tons of glitter. I mean, I usually snuck a little bit in there just because I like my sparkle. And we did sparkle in different ways. Like we had like metal, like coins. Uh, we might have some like mirrors, you know, um, 
there might be a little bit of like glitter or a suit that's a fabric from Egypt that has um, actual pieces of silver woven into the fabric really cool stuff but also another topic <laughs> but it's textile related so maybe it's not so off topic and then meanwhile the cabaret girls they were covered in glitter and it was all sequins and shiny beads and all that fun stuff so there's your little you know segue into belly dance culture so but yeah so I'm not sure for her opalescent or not like nothing screaming at me one way or another and I'm thinking of doing not opalescent just because there's a piece of valor on one two three stitch big enough that's not sparkly so maybe I should just order that and call it a day because I just told you how long I waited for my pictureless plus order and there's very few places I've found where I can get it quickly aside from one two three stitch and what they have in stock so that's kind of swaying me a little bit so a um, few more things that I've gotten because I told you I got another pictureless plus order a lot of what I was getting was the beads for fairy idol um, there was also a few metallics that were out of stock that now we're back in stock I still don't have absolutely everything but that's fine you know like I've got a new start over here which I'll I'm not gonna show you guys so much just because I haven't really done much because <laughs> I started in like the middle of her tail where there's white and then after I started that I went and dyed my hair purple and I still got some purple on my nail beds. I use gloves and stuff, but you know, when you're rinsing it out in the shower, like it just, it tints my nails. So seeing it on my nails, I know it's not going to like get on anything, but I'm very timid about stitching with white while having purple dye kind of stuck on my nail beds, you know, see, especially this one right here. So I haven't been touching that since I've re-dyed my hair and there's not much to show you anyways. Like there's a little bit, little bit of white, it's nothing exciting. So, but yeah, she's on the bars and that's fun. Um, but this other piece of fabric I have here, um, because I was in, you know, fabric segregating mode and I had shown you this before for another design and I've kind of decided that, yeah, that's the one I'm using for that one. So let me show you that one real quick. And this is Brilliant Mermaid. I like it because it's not a Mirabella mermaid and she's unusual. Um, I got her off eBay. I paid a fair bit for this chart and it doesn't pop up very often. So if you see it and it's a price you're willing to pay, I would grab it. So, but yeah, I just think she's really pretty. And so now this piece of Kaleidoscope from Fabrics by Stephanie, I think. Yes, Kaleidoscope, Fabrics by Stephanie. This is a 28 count linen because there's a fair bit of beads in that design. So here it is and one of the reasons I really am digging this is because of all the orange and the green and the blue like there because that's kind of what's in her design she's kind of you know got oranges greens and blues and yeah it kind of blends but I don't know I just I really I really dig this piece for her I think it'll be cool and it also was nice not having to order more fabric again I'm still nailing down her because this is a not DMC listed chart so it's a conversion and some of the conversions are a little wonky so I've been fixing it but I've been procrastinating on finishing that but I just ironed this piece and that was one thing that was kind of bugging me because a lot of the pieces that I have are folded and they get all these creases in them and I don't like it you know so it's one reason I use scroll frames too because that kind of almost smooths the fabric out a little bit but so there's that um, and then that next order that I put in from one two three stitch this was a random piece of fabric that I got and actually no did I get this from picture this plus no this is a this is a fabric orphan and I got this from Etsy and it was funny it's got this little certificate of adoption I thought that was kind of cute and so this is a picture of this plus fabric, but it doesn't have a name. I was not expecting it to be this kind of delicate pink, but at the same time, I think this would be really good for like one of the uh, Victoria Sampler, um, one of the heirloom either anniversary or the birth sampler. Like, I think this would look really pretty with that. So that's kind of where I'm thinking that's going. Um, 
Here's another random, um, I bought this off eBay, new Teresa Wensler, and it was just one of those that I'm like, you know what, I realized I didn't have this design and I just kind of wanted it. And I went through a phase where I was watching other people stitching Santa's Magic by Mirabilia, and I was, it, and Santa's not really a big thing for me to stitch, but looking at people's uh, Santa's Magic, one thing that was really drawing me were the pears, the sparkly pears he has in his scarf. But then I started looking at what it cost and I was like, mm, you know, and so then I started thinking, well, what's a Santa design you don't have? And the Teresa Wensler, when I found this one, it was cheap. So I'm like, I'll just get this Santa instead. So, and yeah, it's a Teresa Wensler I don't have. Here's another design I got off eBay and it arrived kind of bent up. This is the um, Angel of Autumn. Fall's my favorite season. So yeah, I, I just, I like the colors in her. And I think her flow is really cool. I don't think those wings would keep her aloft, though. That's just my opinion, though. <laughs> I'm not an aeronautics person. Also, this thing I got off eBay. I had seen a couple floss tubers. I think the first person that I saw it from was Michelle Bendy Stitchy. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm getting that. And it's this Star Wars design. I just love it. And most of it is half stitches, so that'll stitch up quick. I want some black Belfast for this. And I've been looking and I can't find it, so I might just get some white Belfast and some black dye and do what a girl can, you know, so. But I just love the colors in that. I ain't doing them French knots. Those are gonna be very sparkly beads. Because, fuck French knots. Okay, um, I did get... <laughs> I went on a whisper kick again, partially because I told you guys in the last um, video that I'm looking for um, aut the Autumn Queen by Mirabila because she has whisper on her and I have a mind to give her um, the whisper is white. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we change that to like a fox color? So I had bought a thread. I think it was this one. And the reason I bought this one because it was called Fox Red or something, which I'm like, this just looks kind of borderline auburn brown, you know, but not what I would call foxy. So I got another color and I'm like, that's foxy right there. So I got that one. And then Fairy Idol, she's got some on her and I couldn't find the number. And I don't, I think it might be discontinued. Well, then I was watching Cross Stitch with Luda and she's got Fairy Idol, and she was showing her stash. And this one right here, it's uh, 118. And what is this color? And when I looked up the color that was no longer, let me see what it's called. It's something brown, some kind of brown, just brown. And it's Whisper 76. Well, I couldn't find that anywhere. So <laughs> I had put into my card all these different shades of brown. But then I had seen that Luda was using this one. So I was like, eh. <laughs> Get all the browns. And then once you pick your fabric, decide which one you want the best. But I also thought, because the whisper, when I started looking, where is this whisper used? It looks like it's this backstitch tenderly, like viney stuff. So just for funsies, and in case I don't like the brown, I got some olive green. Because I like playing with Whisper. I know that makes me a weirdo, but <laughs> I'm happy being a weirdo. So, got that. And then I got, this was just pretty. Got, this is Amethyst. Yeah, Amethyst Stinky Dyes. And I was just like, hmm, I want it. <laughs> so I bought it. And then, uh, also watching Cross Stitch with Luda. Now, I almost want to say that I should stop watching other floss tubers because it becomes a shopping list generator for me. <laughs> so I was watching Luda's videos and she showed this design that she had finished that I had never seen before. And I feel kind of dumb about that. Um, it's a Nora Corbett, Corbett, Corbett. I always struggle with that one. Don't judge me. Um, and it's this six geese laying it doesn't, the picture isn't that pretty, but when I saw the finished one on Luda's, I was like, oh my God, that is so cute. And I love all the beads around its neck and the little crown. And it's just very beaded and which you'll see, cause I bought the beads too. 
And I was just like, I like that. I don't know. I have this weird thing with geese. Like, I just think they're cute. You know, other people hate them, but I don't know. I just, I want to hug their long skinny necks. So I got that design. And then I got all of the beads and the treasures, which there's not going to be a good way to show you these. So there's these blue ones. I think they're like the icicles hanging from the trees. This lovely green teardrop. Got some metallic. Yay, it was in stock. Your basic crystal beads. Some orangey ones. Some bicones, basically. And more bicones. And two larger, these look like six millimeter uh, bicones. And there's a blue one and a red one. And these are kind of a funky color, but they're like, I don't know, greeny gray kind of color. And some gold. And then I got this fabric just because I'm looking for neutrals for like Teresa Wensler's. And ironically, had no intention of stitching this with that, but I'm thinking I will stitch that on this because I'm like, yeah, that and this is darker than what kind of I had in mind for a Teresa Wensler. I wanted something a little lighter. So, but I think my six geese of laying will go on there. I don't know when I'm going to start it. Maybe sooner because it's small. Like, and I, I would like to stitch more smalls because I don't do that enough. But yeah, so that was the, the latest one, two, three stitch, which I was shocked. I thought I was going to come and make a video and be like, oh, hey guys, I ordered from one, two, three stitch again, but it's not in yet, you know, but no, it, I ordered it and it arrived right around the time where I felt like shooting a video. Also, I also got some gray whisper just because I'm like, and just in case, like, I don't know, the foxy thing doesn't work out. Like, Here's some gray just in case. Again, I told you I want to play with whis whisper because I'm a weirdo. So, yeah, got those. Um, I also have got some more Clay by Kim's. So that's super exciting. I'm not going to show like every single one, but there is one that I was like super happy to get. And it's kind of dumb, kind of dumb. But um, so she, during her clover sales, was um, doing some clovers with some insects and I got one of the ladybugs and I really wanted a bee. Well then the next round she did the Sakura cherry blossoms which I wasn't too big of a fan because they're very pink um, or at least the previous years had been. So I was kind of like you know I'm just gonna see what else is up and I thought maybe she'll put a bee up. And there was one bee and I got him! Isn't he cute? I love his little pointy butt. And his little transparent wings. Hey, this isn't showing up, so let's try Edis. Is that better? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Hopefully it's not focusing too well. But isn't he so cute? I just really love him. And it's funny because I really need a yellow dragon. I'm like, this is the closest thing I have to a yellow dragon. <laughs> so... But yeah, I started organizing all my Clay by Kim's by rainbow color for the most part. And yeah, I need I need yellow. <laughs> or a monarch dragon, that'd be very sweet. I also need to make them a bigger dragon minder because it's getting a little bit crowded on there. Oh, here's another one that I got. I've gotten a couple of the clover ones. And this one, I was conflicted because it's got antenna. And I this is my first one with antenna. And I'm not sure I would like the antenna. But this one, like most of them, the antenna were pointed up. This one that I got, his antenna are pointed down. And he's just so cute. He's got such a cute little face. And I love the wings. They got like this gold. And they're transparent. And I like the little Celtic coin type thing. Just so, so cute. And he was the only one with his antenna pointing down like that. Everyone else, the antenna were going like up. But yeah, super cute. So yeah, he's been sitting with me here. I tend to keep the latest dragon, that and my peacock, just because I adore my peacock. So, but yeah, I also have another clay by Kim on the way. <laughs> and it is, um, one of the cherry blossom ones she posted them again and i don't know this time i was like you know you've talked me into it because they were more of a richer berry color not so much a girly pink you know which sometimes i do like girly pink i should stop saying that i don't like pink because it's not necessarily true that's just there's certain shades of pink you know and it also depends on what mood i'm in so but yeah I think that's pretty much it. Maybe someday I'll show you guys the sewing machine if you guys want to see it. Um, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> that was, uh, that's, uh, yeah, I got I got to get to know it a little bit. Um, maybe I can figure it out a little bit once I zigzag 
my fabric for fairy moon so but i've got a lot of new starts coming up you know fairy moon's the first one that's going to happen i'm pretty sure tribal queen and <laughs> gypsy queen is going to be up after her um i still need the fabric for fairy idol and we'll see how long i go back and forth over whether i want opalescent or not Oh, and also I'm looking at fabric for um, Rainforest Lace. You know, I'm stalled on that because I've decided I want opalescent. Well, there's one piece of fabric I have that I might like for it, but I also thought I might, I want to get another piece of this just because I like it. And I did a toss with it for Rainforest Lace and I really liked it. Now with this piece, I have another piece of this that's not opalescent and it's more blue and it's going on a mermaid design that I showed you guys already. So I'm like, I want more of it, so I'm going to order it, but I'm not thinking that I'm ordering it for Rainforest Lace, just in case it's way more blue like the last one was. I just don't want to like get disappointed and feel like I'm buying fabric and fabric and fabric for that design. So, you know, which that was another reason I felt kind of like glad that I found homes <laughs> for some of the fabric I already have, because I don't like buying fabric and not using it. Like I don't like hoarding it. I like using it because it takes up a lot of space it's kind of pricey you know like I just don't like having a bunch of fabric you know that I'm not using so but I will say there is a piece of fabric I had that was big that I did assign to another design so I feel like because I assigned that fabric and that's it's um it's a Chatelaine I'm not gonna start very soon oh speaking of Chatelaine that reminds me I got something else to talk about before we go but um, that piece that I had put off on a chatelaine, I'm not starting it anytime soon, so I'm not digging it out and showing it to you just yet, but I felt like since I found that fabric at home, I can bring some more fabric in, <laughs> which I want more of this anyway. So it's like, you know, this is just me negotiating with the voices in my head over what, what I'm allowed to do. So that segues into the chatelaine order. So as I said, tomorrow's my birthday. And girls going birthday shopping. Um, I'm going to order some kits from Chatelaine for my birthday because I have a big list and I don't want to wait for the sale. I also don't want to wait for the sale, which happens in April, um, which I'm going to be making an order for the sale too. This is just like another, this is my birthday order. So there's, this is an exception. And I kind of like the idea of not waiting for the sale because the kits that Cindy at European Cross Stitch puts together, she discounts them pretty heavily already for everything that you get. And when she has the sale and it's discounted even further, it sometimes makes me think like, how do you even make money to keep doing this? You know, so I kind of want to make an order off sale time just to throw some support, you know, like, and it's my birthday, so like I can say, screw the savings and get you stuff. <laughs> so um, just to let you guys know what I'm getting, I have decided finally, I am ordering beaded toadstool tile just because it's fun and quirky and I love it. And it's, ton it's got tons of beads, so that's fun. Um, and I'm ordering poison garden. And I went back and forth on which one I wanted to get for a while. Partially I picked Poison Garden because I have another tattoo in progress on my leg that's got kind of a dark witchy kind of vibe to it. And I feel like Poison Garden's got a dark witchy vibe to it. So I don't know, I was in the mood <laughs> for that kind of uh, an aesthetic. So that and I love the center in Poison Garden and Poison Garden's got so many quirky little things like there's like a spider web and there's like these little cauldrons that are smoking. It's just kind of wicked and I like that so I'll be getting that design and probably also shopping for some fabric for it um, beaded toadstool tile hmm <sighs> that's one that I'm like am I just gonna get the white fabric and do that on there I probably will just because if I start thinking about what fabric I want to do it for I'm probably going to take forever and then not start it so <laughs> I'll probably just get the white and stitch it on there so I think that'll be fine so that's what I'm going to order for my birthday. I'm also probably going to make a Fabrics by Stephanie order and get me a bigger piece of this. There's also a couple other pieces of her stuff that I want a bigger one of. So yay birthday shopping for me tomorrow. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll also be trying to straighten up this mischiever that I made from when I pretty much dumped out all my fabric and started doing floss tosses galore. So, um, yeah, we manian early this year, even though it's the last mania. So 
I guess I'll go out in style. <laughs> but anyways, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, you can check out my Instagram. It's Sharky Stitcher. I'm going to try and start linking that in the description below. I'm also going to try to add any conversions that I post during the video in the descriptions below. So that's a work in progress. So anyways, I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you next time. Bye bye.